Hi there everyone, my name is Zach and a while ago I did a video about different AI armour designs. Now, back then I did it as a bit of a joke, the designs were pretty terrible. <laughs> but more recently a video has come onto my feed which shows um, maybe a bit of a progression there. Now I'm not going to be looking at these from the point of view of how ethical AI designs are, that's something for another channel. But from my point of view I'm just looking at how practical these armor designs are from a user's point of view. Obviously they're fantasy, um, so they're not historical. Some of them are historically inspired because AI learns from, um, from human art, but it also doesn't have the ability to um, decide whether or not a piece of art is good or not. It will just look at it and, uh, um, and learn from it. It won't decide whether or not the armor in it is practical and usable. So. Without further ado, let's have a look at these designs. Okay, so this first one is the USA. Um, the helmet kind of seems a bit out of place with the rest of it. Um, the helmet has a piece together construction, whereas the rest seems to have very large plates. Um, obviously, you've got to have the US flag on it. Um, it looks to me like you've got mail being worn under the armpit, well, in the gaps of the armor, but not actually under the armpits. And the mail looks really quite thick. So um, I'm not sure that that's actually one, useful, and two, um, how comfortable that's going to be. The plates on the shoulder are really wide as well. He's going to really struggle to get his arms up above his head. Um, Usually the larger plates on a harness are lower down on the shoulder here and you need the articulation needs to go over the point of the shoulder here. We don't really have that here. This is a lot more like um, the Witcher or, um, or that kind of thing. Um, and as it's plate rather than leather or mail, it's, um, it's a bigger problem here for him. Okay, so Germany, again, we've got kind of later period um, torso and shoulder protection coupled with an earlier looking helmet. Um, I don't know why he's got a pauldron on his right arm but nothing on his left. Um, it certainly doesn't look like there's an extra pauldron underneath his cape. Um, really if you were fighting and he does appear to be the kind of person who would have his left arm forwards, uh, you would have your heavier armor on the left shoulder. Uh, that being the case. Um, the gauntlet looks a bit messy to me as well. Um, I don't quite understand, um, as Germany has got a very famous style of armour, why they're not using it for this. Uh, the other impractical thing, the Aventail looks quite um, floppy um, and feels like it would uh, um, impede, uh, impede movement around the neck, it would kind of drag on the neck a little bit. Uh, very often aventails are either um, quite light um, or, they're, um, or they're padded. This one appears to be heavy and unpadded, so you can really see the folds of it there. Okay, India. It's such a shame that they didn't use actual Indian armour for this. There are some absolutely gorgeous um, Indian armours from the medieval period. Um, Let's have a look. Again, we've got a bunch of mail and it doesn't appear to be under the armpits. Um, not everyone did wear mail, but I don't understand why you would have it really big and baggy over your lower arms, but not under the, not protecting the armpits. Um, generally, the torso is the place where you protect first. So if you're going to put mail somewhere, um, put it under the armpits. Again, the pauldrons are a little bit big, a little bit clunky. These are better than the previous ones. They look like they might have some kind of articulation, but generally on this, you can see the articulation is actually much lower down the arm than it needs to be. Um, you've got it on the van brace area here. Um, this can actually be a solid plate because this part of the arm just doesn't move. You want the articulations up here, really. Hungary, again, it's... Well, I prefer the Aventail on this one. This one looks like it might be a, um, a lightly padded Aventail. It's not got thick folds. That's good. It also looks like he's got um, mail hanging out underneath the armpits, which is good. Um, I really am not sure what's going on with the groin section. 
Um, he, it looks like just solid plates that really aren't going to give him any movement whatsoever, um, which is a, uh, a big problem. Um, obviously, um, in the medieval period, um, a huge amount of work was done to allow movement um, from the waist down. Um, loads of research and development, lots of different countries did it in different ways, either with really high leg armor, like you see in um, German Gothic armor, long folds, like you see in, um, in English armor and in um, the earlier German Kastenbrust style, or um, layered mail, like you see in Italy. Um, this doesn't appear to really have any movement going on there. So a plus on the Aventail, a minus on the, um, on the movement down below the waist. Love the flashy look of the Brazilian armor. Uh, love the colored plates. I think that the eye slots just seem like they're a bit unnecessarily large. Um, there are some armors that have those big, um, uh, big eye slots. I wouldn't want them to be that big, uh, personally. Um, but some people historically did have them that big. Uh, he appears to have mail under the armpits, which is great, but it does look like it's kind of coming out in folds a little bit. Um, and he's got massive plates on his shoulder over the part that is supposed to move. Um, this one is slightly lower down, so it's not going to foul on his neck quite so much. So that might be a plus there. Um, one thing is that someone would probably look at an armor like this and say, well, no one would wear an armor like that because it's too beautiful, it's too decorated. Um, that doesn't appear to be a historical mindset. So um, we, can, we can leave that idea behind. The South African armor goes a different way again. So um, it's going back towards kind of quite practical. Um, there is obviously still a color scheme to it which is nice, uh, but it's painted on, and many historical armors did have painted color schemes. Um, I'm not a fan of this articulation around the waist, but it is better than the previous one. Um, and he's gone for smaller pauldrons, but I would go for even smaller than that. You don't need them to be big. Um, smaller caps um, do give much better protect, um, smaller caps do give much better movement. And the extra size here isn't really doing anything for him. So obviously large pauldrons in a historical sense aren't so much about um, bringing armor away from the shoulders so much as wrapping around the front and the back of, um, of the shoulder and protecting these gaps um, in between uh, the breastplate and the arm protection. So um, yeah, these plates kind of hanging out off the side are a bit unnecessary. A lot of these armor designs seem to have cloaks. Yeah, this next one does as well. I like the way that the Italian knight um, is kind of looking back and it's, it's kind of a bit more Greek, I suppose, than, um, than Roman. But then we know that the Roman period, uh, at the beginning of the, uh, the Roman Empire, the, um, I should say the Republic, the Romans were basically using hoplites, so, um, so we'll allow it. Um, and the Taruges. Uh, we do actually see that in Italian um, Renaissance armor. So, um, so that's pretty good as well. Um, this, this is looking pretty good. You've got the articulation around the fold. The waist is quite high up. It's near to the elbow, which is a good, uh, good for giving movement there. We've got the Taruges, which uh, we do see in um, Italian art from the Renaissance. Um, we've got a, um, a bar boot. Uh, Corinthian style bar boot. We do see that in the 15th century. It's looking pretty good. Okay, I'm going to give it to them. This one, uh, this one looks pretty good. The United Kingdom. Okay. Uh, well, mm, not so much of a fan of this one. Um, again, we've got cloaks. I don't know why we have all of these big cloaks being worn. Um, I mean, it's not terrible. It's hard to see actually the armor with the cloaks. Um, and it does appear to be um, a mixture. We've got mail underneath the armpit, that's good. We've got an aventail that isn't too floppy. We've got eye slots that aren't too big. 
it's all right it's pretty good um i think it's definitely a modern aesthetic rather than a medieval one but you guys can tell me what you think about that uh i think this armor would work i think this is one of the better armors here um it doesn't appeal to me personally but uh, uh but i think we've got to win us do you know what guys we're going to leave it there there are a few more if you'd like me to do some more of these then leave a comment down below Thank you very much to my patrons for supporting me. You can find a link to that in the description down below if you want to help the channel out. And I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.